HTML is the foundation of the internet for a reason. The syntax is so easy that you could teach it to a fifth grader, and when you combine it with CSS, you can use it to build just about anything you can imagine. But there is one major downside. It's static. So when you have great ideas like, I want an online shop. HTML can't do that. Or maybe, I want a user dashboard. HTML can't do that either. Membership site. Nope. Booking system. Nope. Login page. Nope. Forum. Nope. Conditional. Nope. Dynamic. Nope. HTML can't do any of that. So we asked ourselves a crazy question. What if it could? And that's why we built Loops and Logic. It's a templating language for WordPress that uses the exact same easy peasy syntax as HTML, but with a ton of cool features to make your website dynamic, like being able to build loops and logic and a few dozen other things that you can mix and match to make a million different possible kinds of websites. Basically, it can do anything. Okay, not yet, but it's really good at displaying data from your WordPress site in just about any way that you can imagine. And that is what this video is about. Out of the practically infinite number of possible web pages that you could build using this language, I'm going to show you one. We're gonna start off pretty basic, but I'm gonna show off some advanced features toward the end, so I hope you'll stick around. Now, I can already hear your very real non-AI self sitting there saying, why do I need a new WordPress plugin to work with dynamic content? Exactly. I already use code snippets. I already use ACI. I use Elementor. I use Bricks. I use I Oxygen. Use I use Press. I use Metabox. I get it. There are a ton of great tools out there that can help you build dynamic WordPress sites, and we love them all. But Loops and Logic is different for two big reasons. Number one, it's a language, which means that it's more flexible than any page builder interface could ever be. But unlike other languages like PHP or even code snippets, it's easy to learn so you'll know exactly what your code is doing instead of guessing about somebody else's code. And number two, it has all the dynamic data features you could wish for, but you can use them no matter what plugin stack or page builder your site uses. So if you work for clients that all use different page builders and plugins, this is huge when you wanna reuse your work. Or it can help when you need to display some data from lots of different plugins that don't have existing integrations with each other. Or you could just use it if you wanna avoid installing a million single purpose plugins. But enough hypotheticals, I wanna show you Loops and Logic in action. So let's open up a site. So here we are in the Loops and Logic interface looking at what are called templates. And if we look at the contents of this template, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this just looks like a regular HTML code editor because at the moment it is. What we have here is just a bunch of divs, an image, a heading, a button, uh, and a class on each of those so that we can make it look pretty with a bit of CSS. If we slap this bunch of HTML onto a page, it would give us a humble static info card. I'm gonna show you how we can use loops and logic to do a lot of cool stuff with this over the next few minutes, including making it dynamic, using conditional logic, working with uh, WooCommerce data, filtering products, making an add to cart link, organizing products by category. If ever you want to skip through this video because you get bored, no hard feelings, I bore myself sometimes. So you can use the timestamps in the video to jump around to the interesting bits. And if you're ever unclear on exactly what I'm doing, don't worry, it's not you. I am going to do my best to show you the basics of this language, but to keep this video short and sweet, um, I might skip over some of the nitty gritty. If ever you get lost, just keep watching. It'll all make sense. This video is supposed to be more of a feature showcase than a syntax tutorial anyway. So, templates. This is an LNL template, and it's where the magic happens, but like I said, there's no magic for now, just HTML. But we're gonna add some magic real soon. Starting off with the basics first, how do we display this template on the page? You can see that I've named this template Dynamic Grid, and if I head over to my Gutenberg page here, I can add our uh, tangible template block and then select our Dynamic Grid template here. Um, this block is also available as an Elementor widget and a Beaver Builder module, and even if you're using a different page builder, you can always display your template using the short code uh, like this, template name equals dynamic grid or whatever the name is of your template. Um, if I save this page and check it out on the front end, we've got our little card that's displaying some static HTML. So uh, let's start making this a little bit more interesting by changing our template so that we're displaying content from our WordPress blog instead of just static text. I already have a couple of blog posts set up uh, and if I head over to my 
blog posts here, you can see that I have six blog posts. Um, and to keep things on brand, I decided to make this a duck themed blog. So we're going to head back to our template here. And I'm going to show you the real hero of loops and logic. And that would be dynamic tags. Now, dynamic tags use the exact same syntax as regular static HTML tags, except they're capitalized so that they're easy to find. We're trying to build a grid of blog posts, which means that we're gonna kinda wanna loop through this whole thing once for each of the blog posts on our site, and then for each post, we might wanna display the title, uh, an excerpt, and a bunch of other fields. And the dynamic tag that we're gonna use to loop through all of our posts is the loop tag. So same syntax as HTML, we will write our opening loop tag up here and then add our closing loop tag right down here. And just like an HTML, each tag has a particular set of attributes that you can use to define how it should work. So in this case, we need to specify uh, what post type we want LNL to loop through by adding the type attribute. Uh, and then we wanna loop through posts. So we'll set that equal to post. So what does this do for us? If we head back to our page here and refresh, you can see that we now have six cards showing up here, one for each of our blog posts. But at this point, we haven't actually made any of the content dynamic, so it's just, it's just repeating the same static content over and over once for each of our six blog posts. So let's go ahead and make this dynamically display the fields from our blog posts. And we're gonna display those fields with another dynamic tag, also intuitively named, the field tag. And that one is also really simple. We're going to just uh, go to this image here and replace it with field image. And then the title, uh, we've got field title. And from an excerpt, I can write field excerpt. Um, and actually to make this automatically display an excerpt in case I forget to write one, I can add the attribute uh, auto equals true. And then uh, words equals 35 to set, the, uh, to set the number of words for my automatic excerpt. Um, these are just uh, the default field names in WordPress, but we can actually also use this to display any custom field we've made. So here I'm going to write, um, I'm going to write the text origin field duck origin, um, which is a, a custom field that I made to show where each of these ducks comes from. Um, and finally, I want to make sure that when someone clicks on any of these cards, it sends them to that post's URL, which means that we need to update the value of our href attribute here. That's our link. Um, and as you'd expect, that's just field URL. But there's one issue. The syntax of regular old HTML doesn't let you write tags inside the value of an attribute. And because LNL is just an extension of HTML, that's not gonna work here either. So this is where you've gotta learn the one difference between HTML syntax and LNL syntax that's going to allow us to put tags inside attributes. Luckily, it's pretty simple. You just swap out the angle brackets with curly braces, just like this. And if I head back to my page and refresh, you can see that I now have a totally dynamic post grid that I could use on an archive page or somewhere else on my site. And it's even displaying my custom field data. And when I click on each of these, it takes me to the post because of that dynamic URL field that we just added. You can see that on this post, I, uh, I've forgotten to upload a featured image, so it doesn't look great. To fix this, I might wanna set up a placeholder that should show up if someone forgets to add a featured image to their post. And to do that, I'm gonna use one of my favorite features of the LNL templating language, which is conditional logic, um, which is really just if this, then that. And the tag that we use for that is called if. So just an example, if we wanted to set up some conditional logic that made part of this template run if the current user is an admin, we might write if user role includes value equals administrator, just like that. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about all the possible attributes in this video, but the way this works is that uh, if this if statement is true, LNL will run or display whatever is between the opening and closing if tags. One of the nice things about LNL um, is that it uses really intuitive language, right? So that even if you don't know the ins and outs of the syntax yet, you can probably look at this and see how it's gonna work. So uh, if I wrote, wrote, you are an admin inside here, it would only display this text uh, if the current user that's visiting this page is signed in as an admin. 
I should mention that a lot of the conditional logic tools that are built into most page builders only give you the ability to show or hide content. And at the end of the day, that is what we're gonna be doing in this particular example, just to keep things simple. But the cool thing about LNL is that if this conditional logic statement is true, we can do anything inside here. You could uh, set variables that affect how the rest of this template works. You can redirect users. You can even nest other templates inside here to make it actually do stuff when this condition is true. You're not limited to just displaying or hiding content like you are with conditional logic systems that are built into most page builders. All right, what I actually wanna do here um, isn't to display a message to admin, right? It's to make it so that if there's a featured image field on the current post, I wanna display that image. And if there's no featured image, um, it should display a placeholder. To do that, we'll replace this subject with field equals image. And we're not trying to check whether this field includes some value. So we can just delete this and write exists. And now what we've set up is that if a featured image field exists, that featured image field is going to display. Now we need to set up what happens uh, on the other half of that, right? What happens um, when this conditional statement is false? In other words, when there isn't a featured image. Uh, and for that, we'll use the else tag, which we put in between our opening and closing if tags. I have an image in my media library, so I'm just gonna add that to uh, an image tag and paste in my image URL, basic HTML stuff. Um, so let's go take a look at what we've built. If we go back to our blog, you can see that we've now got a placeholder image that's getting conditionally displayed on this blog post that was missing a featured image before. This is pretty cool, but let's be honest. At this point, there are lots of plugins available in the WordPress ecosystem that can display data from your blog or even a, a custom post type. As I've been saying since the beginning, what makes Loops and Logic unique is its flexibility, which allows you to display content using LNL's powerful dynamic tags, regardless of your site's data structure, uh, its page builder or plugins. So let's take a look at a bit of that flexibility. What if, instead of displaying blog posts, I wanted to display WooCommerce products? Well, at the end of the day, just about all of the data in every WordPress site is made up of post types and fields. So if we wanna display data from WooCommerce, we just need to swap out the field names. So we'll replace post here with product, which is what WooCommerce calls its post type. Um, we don't have our custom uh, duck origin field set up on products here. So um, we might wanna display the price using regular price field. Um, and we might also wanna change the button to buy now. And just like that, we've reused our work to create a product grid. I've used WooCommerce as an example because it's a popular plugin, but this same process will work with just about any plugin that uses the default WordPress posts table. Let's go a step further. What if instead of looping through every single one of our products, we wanted to get more specific about which products we wanted to display here? Well, we can do that by adding some more attributes to our loop tag to filter the results a little. I also wanna use this as an excuse to show off the date tag. So what I'm gonna to try to do here is to set things up so that instead of displaying all our products, I only wanna display products that have been modified in the past two weeks. You can always reference the documentation at uh, docs.loopsandlogic.com to find out which attributes are available for any given tag that you're working with. Um, in this case, I'm working with the uh, loop tag, so if I scroll down to the attributes available for this tag, I can see the field attribute, which is one of the attributes that will allow us to filter our loop. Um, we can add that attribute into our loop here, um, and then we'll write the name of the field that we want to filter by uh, called modify date. Now, I don't want to just show posts where this modify date field exists. I want to show posts that were modified in the last two weeks. In other words, where this date field has a value that's somewhere between two weeks ago and today. For that, I'm going to need to add two more attributes, which is uh, field compare, uh, which I'm going to set to more than, and field value, which for now I'm just going to set to two weeks ago. 
So in theory, how this would work is that we want LNL to look through all of my WooCommerce products. And if the modify date field is after two weeks ago, it'll display those posts since that means they've been edited in the past two weeks. The issue is that this value here of two weeks ago is just text, right? It's not a date. So LNL isn't gonna be able to compare it to our modify date field. But as always with LNL, there's a tag for that. In this case, we're going to use the date tag. This tag is really useful because it allows us to dynamically generate or convert a date. We want to convert this text here into an actual date so we can just wrap that text in our date tag. Remember that because we're writing this inside an attribute, we've got to swap our uh, angle brackets for curly braces. Um, and I'm also gonna add a little format uh, attribute so that the dynamic date that gets generated here matches the format of our date field. If that sounds confusing, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to show you the capabilities here. I'm not expecting you to be able to write your own template immediately after watching this video. Actually, just so that we can see what this date tag is doing, let's add a little h2 heading tag so that uh, right up here um, that we're going to generate dynamically so we'll write products modified since uh, two weeks ago and then we'll put our date tag in here um, right in that heading just like we did down there um, to make this generate a date dynamically and there we have it when a user visits this page where this template is run lnl will automatically calculate what the date was two weeks ago and plug it in right here. And then these other attributes will filter our loop so that we only display posts that were modified in the past two weeks, counting from whenever the user visits our site. And if I refresh this page, you can see that now only two of my products are showing up because they've been edited in the past two weeks. And let's say I go into WooCommerce and, uh, and I modify another one of my products then when I come back to this page, um, there you can see that this product that I just modified is now showing up. And this date in the heading is also totally dynamic. What I'm really trying to show off here is how LNL's language-based approach opens up some really amazing flexibility that just isn't possible with no-code tools like page builders. I mean, sure, you might be able to find a, a no-code plugin that can generate a date dynamically, but you probably won't be able to take that date and use it as a filter like I'm doing here. And because the LNL language is so flexible, you can really mix and match and nest all the different tags to make it work exactly how you need. All right, that last one was a little complicated, so I'm gonna show you another cool, simple thing that you can do with LNL. Right now, when I click on any of these products, it's bringing me to the product page. But what if I wanted to make it so that instead it brought me to the cart and automatically added this product to my cart? If you've played around with WooCommerce at all, you might know that there's a fun little shortcut that you can use uh, where if you send a user to the cart and add a little URL parameter like, uh, like this, which uh, includes the WooCommerce product ID um, instead of that number, that automatically adds that item to the user's cart. Doing that with Loops and Logic takes literally seconds. Um, I just head to my template. I find where that URL is being added. Um, so here I'm going to plug in the URL for my cart page along with the parameter that WooCommerce expects. Um, and I wanna make that ID number dynamic. So just like I did earlier to display the URL in here, I just display the ID field with uh, field ID and that's it. And now when I visit my shop, and click on the product, you can see that it takes me straight to my cart. And because of that dynamic URL parameter, it's added the product I clicked to my cart, right? There are whole plugins designed to do stuff like this. And now just by understanding a little bit of HTML syntax, you can now accomplish a whole lot of that stuff just by using loops and logic instead of installing yet another plugin, which can make your site a whole lot more efficient. All right. Last one for this video, I wanna show you the very basics of nesting loops. This is really useful when you want to organize your data in specific ways on your page. So what I have right now is just a loop of some of my products, but what if I wanted to organize these posts based on their category? In other words, I wanna list out all of my categories 
as headings. And then I want, uh, under each one, I wanna display the products that belong to that category. Well, that's just as easy as everything else I've shown you so far. And it just requires adding another loop outside our product loop, which is gonna make more sense once you see it in action. So let's go ahead and remove these attributes so that it just displays uh, all my posts. And then I'm gonna add another loop around this one. And just like before, we've gotta specify a loop type. Uh, and in this case, we want LNL to dig through our product categories. So we'll use the type equals taxonomy term, um, and then taxonomy equals product cat, which is just what WooCommerce calls their category taxonomy. Uh, and then inside this loop, we want to display the title of each category term that we're looping through. So we just write out uh, an H2 heading and then field title. So let's see what this gives us. Okay, so you can see that we're now looping through all three of our WooCommerce categories and their titles are being displayed. But this part inside here is just displaying all of my posts each time, which is not what we want. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Um, you can see in our template here that every time we loop through a particular product category, we're going to display the title and then run this inner loop. But this loop is currently just displaying all of my products, not just products that belong to whatever the current category is from the outer loop. So we need to tell this inner loop to only show products that are in the current category from the outer loop. And we're gonna filter this inner loop in exactly the same way that we did earlier by adding some attributes. So we're going to use taxonomy equals product cat to only show products that use this taxonomy. And we're also going to use the terms attribute to only show products that have a particular category term applied to them. Um, but we want this value here to be dynamic. So how do we do that? Well, just like how we display the category title field up here, um, we can also display the category name inside this attribute using field name. And remember that because we're writing a tag inside an attribute, we've got to use the curly braces. Uh, and that's it. Now, each time this inside loop runs, it's going to dynamically kind of look backward and see what the current category term is that we're looping through, um, and then only show products that belong to that category. And if we check out what's going on when we run it, that is exactly what happens. I could go on all day showing you all sorts of cool things that you can build with loops and logic, but the possibilities here are endless. And so you've really got to try it yourself to understand how much power this plugin can give you. If after watching this video, you still don't fully understand how to write your own templates, that's perfectly normal since this video is just a really tiny overview of a few of the things that you can do with this plugin. Um, I also only showed off a few of LNL's dynamic tags in this video. So if you wanna see all of those cool tags uh, and see how they work, you can find more information in the documentation. Uh, if you're interested in trying out Loops and Logic, you can try it for free in the WordPress plugin repository using the link in the description of this video. Um, and if you want to download the template that I showed off in this video so that you can play around with it yourself, you can download it along with a bunch of other pre-made templates also linked in the video description. I hope this video has given you um, an idea of how simple and flexible this language is. Our vision isn't for LNL to necessarily replace your current favorite dynamic site building plugins, although it certainly could if you wanted. It really depends on the projects. On, on some of our agency's projects, we use Loops and Logic to supplement the capabilities of whatever page builder the client is already using so that we can add new features to their site without adding more bloated plugins. Um, on other sites, uh, particularly on large scale stuff with hundreds of thousands of users where efficiency is really important. We'll sometimes just build the whole site with Gutenberg and loops and logic, um, and it saves us a ton of time and makes the sites crazy fast. I hope this video has gotten you as excited about loops and logic as I am. Thanks so much for watching, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me build with LNL. I look forward to talking at you again soon, and until then, stay loopy.